<laughs> so hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. But here with you this morning. Thought I would drop off a little video. Uh, I'm getting my run and walk in. Oh, here comes my partner. Hi, Miss Girlfriend. Come on, girl. She's got to get her fitness on too, you know. Cats, we got to watch them. They could get really mean if they get fit. So anyway... Uh, guys, I thought I would answer a few questions and um, say a few things or whatever. So I hope the video from the garden tour that I just did uh, turned out decent. The lighting is hard. Uh, lighting can be difficult depending on how you film and how hot. And plus, oh, the humidity right now, honey. You don't have to worry about the heat in the south. You got to worry about the humidity. That's what we tell you. So I'm going to answer a few questions real quick. Somebody just asked me this morning, they're like, how in the world, where do you find time to walk and run? Well, you got to get up earlier. <laughs> you got to get up. You got to get moving. You got to get your stuff done. Um, I think if you saw the dust, you know, on my TV stand that I don't even watch t have TV anymore, you'd probably go, that oh, that's why she works outside so much because she doesn't dust. <laughs> You have to make choices, okay? You have to, uh, you know, on different days. Like, for example, if I know it's going to be a rainy day coming up tomorrow into Friday, well, that will be the day that I do extra inside stuff. If I have an opportunity to be outside and working when it's nice and not raining or whatever, then that's what I do. Um, you just have to make time for it. I don't know how to answer that question. You get up and, you know, you let the animals out, you do, you know, you throw in some laundry, you try to straighten up a little bit, you know, keep you at a minimal embarrassment level. Dust doesn't count, okay? Um, dusting, that is. And you just get out and you do. So, I, you know, I've worked my garden a little bit, checked it out. I've done my, all my animal chores. Um, I, and, um, you know, I'm trying to really try to not be absorbed in major portions of my day on social media. That's why I tell you, I'm like, I saw this, but I haven't deep dived on into it or whatever. I've seen it. I've read about it. But beyond that, that's, that's what I know. I lean on you guys sometimes to tell me things because this is what I'm saying. You can't, no, you can't live this full lifestyle and do all the things that it requires if you're sitting on your phone all day. Now, I do carry my phone with me sometimes, uh, depending on, you know, sometimes my clothes allow me to, you know, stick my phone in my pocket or you know, I did walk around one day. This is no joke. I did walk around one day, not understanding where I had lost my phone. And it was in the butt pocket of my jeans. I mean, these things happen, right? Right, that happens. So I'm about to uh, get my walk and run on. So I am um, working on a 5K, but you ha I, I don't mean to say, somebody's gonna say, that's just mean for you to say it. No, it's true. You're gonna have time for whatever you allow for. I mean, you know, and I know, I know some people work are working a lot of extra jobs right now, but if you get a few minutes during the day or on the weekends, you know, get out and stretch and walk or do whatever you can do for you, okay? Just make the time for it. That's, that's all I know to say. So, I mean, it's later in the morning. Most runners like to get their runs on, you know, like way early. No, I like to get my rest, take care of my animals and whatnot, then I'll do that. But that's the way the cookie crumbles there, right? Um... So there's that. The second question I've gotten, because I've shown you that I'm juicing, I'm actually not new to juicing. I'm on my third juicer. <laughs> we have been juicing, James and I, uh, I used to juice like crazy, especially back when Nicholas was a baby. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where you hope you don't fall out of season with it, and sometimes being human, you do. I can tell you that I feel better when I juice. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't eat raw fruits and vegetables, and I don't enjoy a hamburger or biscuits and gravy. Clearly, you know better. You know I do, but I will tell you, if you can juice and get that real burst of just straight into your bloodstream, boy, I'm going to tell you, it's like, boom, everything starts picking up. My favorite things to juice, if you had one thing, if you said, Terry, you can only juice one thing the rest of your life, I would do carrot apple, okay? Very simple, stupid. I started, uh, the Juice Man Juicer is when I started like 20 something years ago. He had a little book. His name was Jake, is it Corvich or Cordich? I think he's passed now, unfortunately. He died a couple years ago. Um, there's a Facebook page about it and you can see all kinds of recipes and he teaches you the do's and the don'ts. But his very basic little book, it teaches you all the do's and all the don'ts as far as what you should do and as far as juicing, 
uh, what skins you can choose, whether you take the skins off, the seeds, which uh, fruits or vegetables are just too mushy or yucky to juice. But like this morning, I took an orange and I peeled off just the peel. Okay, I think I showed that in a video yesterday. I took off just the peel, but you leave all that white pith. That's where all your vitamin C is. And I'll do two, you know, one or two oranges, one or two apples um, without the seeds. Of course, I don't put the whole thing in there. I actually cut the chunks and peel, you know, if it's not organic or whatever, then I will peel off the skin. And then I'll tell you, if you take you just a pinch of ginger and skin it and put it in there, it gives you that kick. Man, whoo! I also like cucumber. Um, pineapple is wonderful. It just depends on what you want to do. So I am juicing. I got this new little juicer. I wanted to try it because it was smaller. They've gotten, juicers used to be huge and super expensive and just so detailed and kind of, that's really the biggest nemesis of it is, uh, you know, taking it apart and cleaning it. This little doodilly is pretty doggone good. I like it a lot. It's easy to clean. So it's that little bullet because I have a bullet for my morning um, drinks that I make with my um, protein powders and different things. I don't drink coffee. I very rarely drink coffee. Um, I think that's a benefit to me. May not be a benefit to you. Uh, you may need your coffee. I like a coffee. You know, we've had a nice meal at a restaurant, which, you know, hardly ever happens anymore. But, you know, if you've had a nice meal and you get a nice little dessert and have a fresh brewed coffee, that's when I like coffee with just cream. I don't, I really honestly, I like bulletproof coffee, but I'm not a huge coffee drinker. That works for me. I, I, I don't I don't need that much caffeine, <laughs> do you think? So anyway, so there's that. Now I'm going to jump over into, well, so if you want to check out that little um, juicer, um, it was, I think it was like $56, okay? Because I'm not spending three and four and five hundred dollars on a juicer. I'm just, I'm not going to do that. Um, so I thought I would try it out and it's great for one to two people at a time. It's really good. So I did that, and everybody in the house is loving it, loving it. Um, the next question that I'm going to answer real fast is I'm seeing a lot of people ask me about genealogy, and I'm going to, I've, got the, the, I've got the most bold statement to make about that. Um, folks, it doesn't matter what your DNA says, okay, whether you see things that you want to see or you don't want to see. You really need to focus on your documentation, okay? Um, I was help, I was commenting to somebody this morning because there was a gentleman, he's like trying to guesstimate what he is, uh, if he's this or that, because he's got a blue-eyed, black-headed, uh, black blue-eyed granddaddy. Well, that doesn't mean jack squat. <laughs> uh, there are black-headed, blue-eyed people all over the world. That doesn't mean you're Native American, you're Melungeon or nothing, just because you're from North Carolina. I mean, you're most likely... I mean, there's a lot of black, really good-looking, black-headed, blue-eyed Englishmen and Scotsmen. I'm kind of married to one. Actually, he had some red in his hair. Y'all didn't know that, did you? James has got some red in his hair. But um, not so much anymore, but he did when he was young. He was a redhead. So, my point is, is you need to be doing your documentation. You don't need to be just hell-bent on DNA. And I thought I was this, or I'm not that, or whatever. The, all DNA tests are different. Some may be more accurate than others. They test on different sites and different symptom organs. Um, you need to do your documentation. Nobody that understands anything to do with genealogy is gonna help you if you don't have a tree built. Now, I know there's some people that have a difficult time because maybe they were adopted. I understand that. DNA is important, I, you know, as far as that, if you wanna really figure out what you are. But really, honestly, documentation and understanding where your people were at certain times and name changes and all kinds of different things is going to give you more information than necessarily what a DNA test will. So I was explaining that to somebody this morning. They just weren't getting it. I'm like, if you took your DNA test, you're waiting on it. Okay, well, that's your business. Okay, but have you built a tree? I don't think they've built a tree. And so I'm like, no one can help you with anything if you don't build a tree. Okay? I mean... If you're, and he, I think what he's specifically looking for is if he's Native American, or has any DNA blood in him, and he, because where he's from, he could, okay? But at the same time, it doesn't mean anything necessarily if you don't really have documentation. All you're going to have is just basically a blood test. And that can be confirmation on things, and but for a lot of things, it's necessarily not. It just depends on how it goes. So the bottom line here, and I'm not giving a lecture. I'm really honestly telling you that 
if you go to any genealogy classes, if you go anywhere that can help you with roles, census, documentation, land grants, um, pensions, uh, uh, nobody's going to take you serious, really, if you haven't done the legwork on the documentation. I can't stress that enough. Okay, so we're about to get serious. Serious with a jog and aren't we, Ginger? Yes, ma'am. I have something I want to say to y'all, okay? And I think a lot of you are going to agree. Some of you are going to be confused and a handful of you are going to disagree. That's fine. Whatever. Um, guys, I would, uh, whatever it takes, I would be making time for your fitness and for your plans and preparations. Um, somebody was asking me if I thought what was going to happen in 2024 would be a repeat of 2020. Did I say that right? And um, I'm going to tell you right now, that's what I'm preparing for. Here's what you need to understand. And this is what I think. This is my opinion alone, okay? So you have your opinion. That's fine. Um, there really is one, only one person really qualified and justified into uh, at this point to uh, hopefully win and has the best shot of pulling us out of this minutia. And that's not a Kennedy and that's not um, a cutie run in Florida, okay? I'm sorry, not I'm not down with it. And uh, th I think that there's several different theories that we could come up with here to think about. Um, are they gonna try to ruin the country as much as possible before they turn it over to somebody else and it's so bad that nobody can actually fix it in one term and then they're going to blame that person okay that could be a strategy you could have the same strategy uh, that basically you're going to have the same old same old listen i'm going to tell you something and i think a lot of you are going to disagree okay and I, sometimes i disagree with myself <laughs> but I think this thing that you see, the liquor sniffer and all of his shenanigans, falling, sniffing, licking, falling, dripping ice cream, pooping his pants, you know, not knowing whether he's going that way or that. Guys, I got to tell you something. I'm to the point now where I question, let me put it that way. Is that an act? Is it an act? Because here's what I know. If that was my dad, my husband, my, my colleague, whatever, I would be doing everything that I could to basically get them out and get them basically help and get them what they need. I, you know, I wouldn't be jacking them up on juice I wouldn't be letting them just make a sham of themselves and everyone else. Now, you could go with the theory of they just want power. They don't care. It's a puppet. Um, it's somebody else in control. Yeah, I, I, believe me, I'm there too. But I have to tell you, that all may be true, but yet there is an act going on because it helps people excuse certain things. And, um, I, you know, I, I'm just saying, don't bite off on all of that. You, you, you don't, don't take a full bite. I mean, think about it. I mean, I just sit there and I go, that is an act. That has got to be an act. And if it's not, you know that he's being jacked up. I mean, you know, when you watched the, seriously, and I said this very, from the very, very get-go, in 2020, when we were watching all the presidential debates, Anytime somebody's eyes look full, are basically fully dilated like a shark rolling over after it's made its kill, you know, it's got shark's eyes like a doll's eyes. You know, remember that in Jaws? Dolls like a doll's eyes. Remember that? I mean, that is not normal. I mean, what is that? Like, what you jacked up on? Mountain Dew doesn't do that, at least not in my, my experience. Or what's behind all that? What? Mm-hmm. So here's what I'm saying. I think the country could be thrown into complete chaos at any moment at, at starting in the next minute. I think we're on the verge of a lot of potentials, but I think we're also at a, you know, you're right there. Are, they, are we holding it or are we going for it? And 
you know, I just believe that we're going to ride out 2023 uh, with some potentially very catastrophic economic problems. You already know this, um, which is going to lead us into 24, which could be the catalyst for a lot of different things. And then we're going into being basically an election year. And so here's what I'm saying. No matter how you feel about the subject, no matter what you question, what you believe, um, who exactly you want to win or not win, um, I would be preparing. And so therefore, because I'm making this video in July, mid-July of 23, basically what I'm telling you is, is you, if you have a year or even a year and two months, let's say three months, whatever, how much, however long it is, you better book it as much as you can. That's me too. That's not just me telling you. That's my opinion about me, myself, my family, my farm. Whatever you can do to get in great physical shape, as best you can, whatever you can do, okay? Whatever you can do just to make yourself better, you're going to handle things better. Whatever you can do to pay off as much debt as you can, please do it quickly. Whatever you can do to, if you didn't grow any food this year, maybe you moved. I've been there. I understand. It's hard to do that, but have seeds, lots of seeds. We've been talking about that for years. Um, the basic nice packed pantry for your family and safety measures and defense measures and medications, all the things. Here's what I'm saying. I don't know how far into to going towards 2025, I just don't know how stable we're going to be. And that's a, you know, that sounds so far away because we are all like this because we feel like we essentially lost almost two to three years of our life because of the scamdemic. Um, um, there's a lot of catch up. But think about this. The election is not far over a year away. Do you think that's going to be peaceful here, regardless of which way it goes? I don't expect it to be. I'm not, I'm not saying to do anything. What I'm telling you is I'm just personally telling you what my expectations are. And then regard, and regardless of how that goes, how is that going to be the lead in into 25? So, and that sounds so far away. Like I was saying, folks, that's just, that's not even a year and a half away. That's how close you are to these pivotal moments in world and American history. And are you prepared for that? So yes, this is why I'm running. This is why I'm doing it. I'm running my second 5K. I'm going to do it. Regardless of how good I do, it doesn't matter. I was we, James and I were talking about it. I said, I have no expectations again. Okay, I have zero expectations of how well I'm going to perform in a 5K. I did really good the last time. I don't have that. I, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just trying to get, I'm just trying to do better. Try to do better now and don't shut up. Now is not the time to shut up. Doesn't mean you go out and browbeat people and fight. What I'm saying is, is if you get in a conversation with people, you plant the seed. You've been given that opportunity to plant the seed, to help them think about things and to prepare. You don't have to put them down. You don't have to get in a cuss fuss fight. You don't have to do nothing. If you say are peaceful and you say your bit, you got to be way far out these days to not understand what type of times that we are living in. And I just want to make sure I've said that. So as far as 2024 goes, I have my prayers and my hopes going. Okay? I do. But folks, be aware that you could very likely see a repeat of 2020. Be prepared either way. I hope I answered your questions. Get juicing. If you are like to do some genealogy like I do, somebody asked me, what do I do in my downtime? I said, what little downtime I get? I sit down, I try to chill, and I do genealogy. That's my favorite downtime. That's me. But above all, those moments are few and far between because I'm choosing to run and health and really trying to push James with continuing to try to get him to better health. Um, he's doing really good, really, really good. And we want to take advantage of those moments and push forward to be better. Guys, keep preparing, okay? Don't slow down. 
little bit every day, something every day, every moment, everything, every can, every bag of little seeds that you can get, whatever, everything counts. I appreciate you all. Keep, keep going the distance. Like, subscribe, and share. And honey, we'll see you on the next video.